Hello everyone, RogueFox here, and welcome back to another Minecraft video. Today, I'll be covering a topic in which I've had many questions about, other people have had many questions about, and possibly you have had many questions about as well. And that topic today is the ticking area. In today's video, I'll be covering, to the best of my knowledge, what a ticking area is, what all of that ticking area stuff entails, and also what is the range of the ticking area. So, if that's something you're interested in, stay tuned because we're going to cover all that stuff today. Before we get things started, I just want to let all of you know that most of the information I'll be referring to is coming from the Minecraft Gamepedia page on ticking areas. If you want to take a look at that list yourself, I'll provide a link in the description below. So, we'll be referring to that a lot. And as you can tell behind me, I've done a lot of experimenting and a lot of my own research to figure out what the ticking area is all about. So, without further ado, Let's go ahead and jump into our video. To start things off, we should probably look at what a ticking area is. So if we look at the Gamepedia page here, a ticking area is defined as a player specified group of chunks that continues to be updated even when there's no player nearby. Because the chunks remain active, processes such as growth, decay, spawning, movement, and rest of operations aren't suspended in them when no players are present, provided at least one player remains somewhere in the dimension. So, what that means, for example, we are in our taking area world. I have the simulation distance set to four chunks. So if you can look at my coordinates here, I am at zero, zero. My Y is just a little higher. The Y has no effect on the taking area, just the active chunks, your X and your Z coordinates. Now, if you take a look here, I have one, two, three, four chunks going out. What that is saying is that your growth, decay, redstone operating, mobs are moving, Stuff like that will all happen within the ticking area. Now, obviously, you can tell I've been doing some testing on the borders of the ticking area here. It doesn't make a complete square. And to kind of show you what I mean, I'll pop up a chart that I personally made on the screen so you can take a look at the area of range or effectiveness of a four chunk ticking area. Now, notice that it makes a little zigzag pattern, almost kind of like a plus sign looking thing, but it doesn't make a full square of a four by four chunk area. Now that we have that defined, let's go ahead and look at that in a little more detail. Now that we know what a ticking area is and now that we've defined it, so we know that a ticking area involves a bunch of chunks within the simulation distance. Now we are in a four chunk simulation distance, but if I go here, as a version 1.2.10, they allowed us to up our ticking area. So if we go here to game settings, I can't do it here within the game. In order to change that, you have to back out and do it. But if we come down here, and if we look right under our seed here, right above where I'm highlighted, you'll see a simulation distance for chunks. Now with the 1.2.10 update, they've allowed us to bump that up to six, eight, and finally we can max out at 10 chunks. So that will definitely increase our taking area and all the chunks involved. And to take a look, let's look down here just for a moment. This is me testing out the 10 chunk ticking area. We'll get into that in a little more detail because I would assume now that we have this option available, everyone bumps their ticking area up to 10 chunks or their simulation distance. So we can tell I've been looking at the borders of those as well. I'll also post a graph of a quarter of what that looks like. And you'll understand what I'm saying later when we get to it. But let's stay focused on what we're talking about here. We've defined what the ticking area is. Now we need to know what happens within it. Okay, so now what happens within the ticking area, you may be asking. And that is something that the Gamepedia defines as events being processed. So as long as you're in the overworld, the nether, or the end, anything that you're doing within that ticking area will be having something going on called events being processed. Now, I'm going to go over the list real quick. So those are things, and if you experience this, this is water flowing, lava flowing, fire spreading, Passive mobs spawning, growing up, uh, redstone working, which I'm sure this is probably why you're looking at this video. So to explain that a little bit better, so let's say we are here at zero, zero, right? We have a four chunk simulation distance. Now let's say right outside our four chunk simulation distance. I did throw a cow out here. We'll talk about that in a second. Let's say out here you have an automatic pumpkin and melon farm with a minecart system running under it. So as long as you're within the four chunk simulation distance, everything is going to work. Your minecart is going to move back and forth. 
your crops are gonna grow, everything's gonna work just fine. But as soon as you come out of the simulation distance there, everything will be suspended as represented by that cow disappearing. The cow is still there, we know that. So if we come right there, he's there, he disappears. So everything that is out there will stop being processed. And usually if you have a minecart running, that will stop moving, and that usually leads to broken redstone contraptions. Now, other things that includes are sand, gravel, concrete powder falling, uh, of course, redstone. Things growing in general, leaves decaying. So to kind of test that out, I ran some tests right here, which we'll get to in just a moment. But also I noticed, let's say you die out here, right? So let's say right there, all your items are floating. Now, if we take a step back, we'll see it. And I've already timed this, so I know that it works. As long as our piece of redstone dust there is visible, our five minute timer for it to despawn is running. But as soon as we disappear, excuse me, as soon as it disappears, so it's right there, you saw it's there, it's despawning, its timer's going, but as soon as we step back, it's gonna stop that timer, everything, out there is going to be suspended so that also means if you've noticed if you're running through like a different area of your world you have a bunch of mobs that are spawning out here you have creepers you have skeletons you have zombies it's daytime they are still there if you're outside the simulation distance but as soon as you come into range let's go ahead i'm going to turn on let's say this doesn't need to be on peaceful right so i can spawn something so let's spawn a guy that's going to burn. So let's go ahead and where are my eggs? Let's go ahead and grab a skeleton right here. So our mob will spawn. Let's go ahead. He's going to start catching on fire. Let's try to run quickly before he dies. So, okay. He's on fire. He's good. He's not there anymore. So we'll wait a few seconds. He probably should have burnt up already, right? There should be bones and everything laying on the ground. But if we come back into the simulation distance here, you can see he's still there. And if we step back, still alive. And you guys kind of get the idea. If he's in the simulation distance, mobs are going to move. Uh, the skeleton is going to burn. But anything outside the simulation distance, all events being processed will stop. So that would be considered a suspended event. I know that's a lot. A lot of information I'm giving here. But hopefully you're starting to catch what I'm saying, and hopefully ticking areas are making a little bit more sense. Also give a demonstration of the ticking area, events being processed and events being suspended. I have this little setup here. What we're gonna do is come down to zero, zero down there, hit our button, that's gonna activate all of our redstone. And then what this is gonna do is gonna set off our torch tower. It's gonna make this piston retract, dropping our sand. It's going to light up this redstone lamp. It's also going to dispense this bucket of lava, which will observe the flowing. And then also, if we take a look up here, I have a hopper with some sand that will be unlocked by this redstone torch. It'll start being turned into glass by the furnace here. It'll drop down into this chest. And as it's coming through, we'll see the redstone lamp lighting up as each piece of glass goes through the hopper. So let's go ahead and try this out. Now we're going to be right here. And we may need to do this a couple times because the sand will fall right now. We see our lava flowing, and then we should see this redstone lamp light up as a piece of glass comes through. So we wait, and then we have our redstone lamp that just went off. Now if we step back, we are now out of the simulation distance. As you can see right here, our lava has stopped flowing. And then... Another piece of glass should have come through, but as you can tell, that's been suspended as well, showing that, you know, redstone contraptions will stop working as we come outside the simulation distance. Now, if we go ahead, I'm going to reset the sand, and it's going to work in the same sense as the cow did. So it will disappear, but then you'll notice it'll be delayed and it's falling as well. So let's go, we'll set this up. And then also in the back, I have three redstone lamps set up right back there. So I'll talk about that in just a moment. Let's go ahead and fire this off. So let's go ahead and press this button. Okay, so we saw the sand start to fall. Everything is stopped. Redstone lamps are on. But as soon as we come back on, 
excuse me, into our simulation distance here, everything continues as it should. Hopefully you're still following along with me. I know that was a lot of information, but to briefly recap, we have our taking area. This does a thing called processing events. So processing events would be our redstone, our lava flowing, like that. All of our redstone working, but as soon as we step out of the chunk, that'd be mob spawning, as we saw with the skeleton. If we step out of the simulation distance, that is called a uh, suspended event. And obviously, it's kind of self-explanatory. All of the events that it should be processing are suspended. So as you saw with the skeleton, it stopped burning up. Our lava has stopped flowing. Our redstone has stopped working. All those things that we just saw, those are things that are involved in our ticking area. Now, the next thing I want to cover is what is the distance of the ticking area? Like I said, it doesn't cover a full square. And as you saw by the chart I threw up, which I'll throw up again, it doesn't make a full square. So it doesn't go from 64 to, I think that's negative 64, 64, all the way to here. But in fact, it does this little zigzag pattern like that. So I had been testing that out. Let's go ahead and start talking about that. For those of you who don't know what a chunk is, a chunk is a 16 by 16 area. Now, if you take a look here, my coordinates are negative 16 and 64. So what that means is that from 00, zero I am, where is, where is it? It's over there, 00, zero I am 16 blocks over, which is my negative 16, and I'm also 64 blocks out. Now, regarding the range of the taking area, this, uh, the Gamepedia also lets us know that even though something is right outside of our ticking area, uh, if it goes one block outside of our ticking area, so if we have a pumpkin right here in our ticking area, it can produce a pumpkin and drop it right out here outside the chunk. Uh, so things will generally work one block outside of our chunk, which I found interesting because if we take a look here, here is block 64, all of this works about two chunks, or excuse me, two blocks outside of our chunk, but anything beyond this is not going to work. So let's go ahead, let's take a look at our range. Now I have all these lamps lit up. With that being said, this was on block 64, right? So technically this is within our fourth chunk, but when we run this thing, you'll notice that the redstone dust will turn on, but the redstone lamp won't. So I found that very interesting, and the conclusion I came up with that is that we want to do all of our red uh, our builds, redstone builds, farming, all within the perimeter of whatever our chunk is. Now let's go ahead and test this thing out. You'll see what I'm saying. Now here we are at zero zero or one zero, as close as I can get. We press this. You can see our lamps go off that are within the perimeter. And also here, the redstone dust did light up, but the lamp did not, as I mentioned. I don't know if that's an example of events being processed one block outside. It's interesting that even though it's within the four blocks, uh, four chunks, it didn't go off. But yeah, interesting stuff. Now let's take one step back. So that means our redstone line should technically be about two blocks outside of our, our range. So let's go ahead, we press that. So these lamps didn't go off, but because this did, I would assume that our redstone was still powered, just like in our example right there, where our redstone dust was light, uh, lit, ignited, whatever the term is, but our redstone lamps did not go off. So yeah, that's very interesting. Now that we've covered all of that information, let's go ahead and bump this up to 10 chunks. Now, if you're like me, as soon as we had the option to do so, we immediately bumped our chunks up to 10, uh, 10 chunk simulation distance. So here we are in the game settings for my taking area world. As I mentioned, we backed out. Now if we come down here, you can see we can change this to six, to eight, 10. So let's go ahead and put it on 10 chunks and go into our world. Now for this last portion, I have not tested the distance of six and eight chunks. For time's sakes, I went right to 10 because I would assume most people went immediately to 10 chunks. So if we take a look here, you can see these blocks each represent a chunk that go 10 chunks out. 
And right now, I will throw a graph that I made on the screen of what a quarter area entails. So that means going out to 160 out there, and then also going out to 160 in this direction. Because the graph was so big, I didn't do a big full-on graph of the whole radius. Like I said, it's just going to be a quarter of an area. So if you want to take a screenshot of this, go ahead and do that. That will probably help you guys out or replay the video. Totally up to you. And nothing fancy going on out here. I just ran the same test that I did out there, right over here. So, you know, if we press our button here, it's going to do its whole thing. It's giving us our perimeter out there. And that's all that pretty much does. All we're doing is repeating the same process out there that we did out here to kind of figure out what this taking area is all about. Now, the same thing applies out here. So if we come out, let's say our block right here, we are on the 16 at 128. So if we come over here, straight back to 128, you can see we have the same issue here where these didn't light up. The redstone disc dust most likely did. But if we come one block ahead, that all worked. So let's go ahead. That was our dark blue block. Keep that in mind. We're going to take a look at it just real quick before we wrap up. So we got our dark blue right out there. So let's go ahead. And notice the top lamps didn't light up. So that again brings us to our conclusion that, you know, whenever we decide to build within our simulation distance, we should probably keep everything within one block of our perimeter. So wherever the chunk ends, bring it one block in and let that be the end of your build. Now, that is pretty much all I wanted to cover. Hopefully this video helps you guys out. And like I said, I'm explaining the ticking area to the best of my knowledge with the help of the Gamepedia and also from some experimenting and testing that I did on my own. You guys have the graphs of the four chunk and the 10 chunk ticking area. So if you need to see those, you can screenshot that or replay the video. It's totally up to you. But with that being said, this is the end of our video. I hope you found this very helpful. I know I had a lot of fun making this and it did take a lot of time and I actually learned quite a bit and I hope you did too. Thanks for watching. This has been Rogue Fox and I'm out. I'll see you later.